Say, kids, what time is it? <laughs> Howdy, kids, and howdy, Buffalo Bob. Well, howdy there, Mr. Dooney, and boys and girls at home and all my kids in the gallery, come on, let's go. going and say, all of you boys and girls, now you listen. If you were down inside of a submarine and you wanted to see out over the top of the water, what would you use? A parasol. That's right. And if you were a soldier and you were down in the foxhole and you wanted to see over the top of the foxhole without being seen by anybody else, what would you use? A Ah, yes, sir, kids, a periscope, just like this swell, howdy-doody mystery periscope here. And boy, kids, you can have so much wonderful fun with a periscope. Now, just look, kids, for instance, actually, you can see around corners with the periscope, just like in this picture. Now, you see, that little fella is able to see around the corner with his periscope. Or you can see backwards, like this fella. Now, he is actually seeing those boys and girls behind him with this periscope. Maybe we ought to call it a backerscope, huh? Or you can look over the tops of things, like this fellow who is able to see what's going on over the other side of the fence. Yes, sir, these are really, really great, and nobody will ever know that you're looking at them. Oh, yes, Clarabelle. Oh, kids, right now, Clarabelle has a little game for me to play with him. He wants me to turn my back to him, and I'm supposed to use the Howdy Doody Mystery Periscope, and I'm supposed to be able to tell some of the drawings that he has made. I'm going to try to identify them. All right, now, Clarabelle, I'm going to sit over here. Now, you get those drawings all set there, and I'm going to look in my Howdy Doody Mystery Periscope. Gee, I see a lot of kids there, Clarabelle, and they're, they're running around a... Oh, there's boys and girls playing around a, a Halo shampoo carton. Is that right? Ah, good. Show me something else now, Clarabelle. What else? Well, now, there's a picture of a very silly-looking fellow. A very foolish fellow with silly eyes and silly hair and silly nose and silly ears. And, and it says on an oh, silly mouth, and it says B-U-F-F-A-L-O, Buffalo, B-O-B, Bob, Buffalo, Bob. Buffalo, Bob! <laughs> Clarabelle, did you do that just to... Now, you said it was a... No. But kids, you know, you can have a lot of wonderful fun with this. Howdy, did you see what he did? Oh, gosh, that Clarabelle, but... Oh, boy, these periscopes are so much fun, kids, that Halo Shampoo and I want every one of you kids to have one. So now here is all you do. You have your mommy buy you a bottle of Halo Shampoo any size and then send in the box top from the Halo carton with 25 cents in coin and your name and address. And you send that to Howdy Doody, Post Office Box 4, New York, New York. Now, kids, that's 25 cents and any size Halo Shampoo box top. And you send that to Howdy Doody, Post Office Box 4, New York, New York. And kids, you get your friends to send in too, huh? Because it's two and a half feet tall. And boy, oh boy, you can play wonderful games with my Howdy Doody Mystery Periscope. That a boy, Howdy. Well, now, you know, kids, what I think we should do today... Howdy, I think the very first thing that we ought to do is to take care of this business about Mr. Bluster's new room being mussed up. Now, that was a very mean thing for anybody to do to Mr. Bluster. Kids, you remember that, don't you? Yes. Just when we had given Mr. Phineas T. Bluster a brand new room with new furniture because he'd been such a swell fella and been helping us so much here around the circus. And then we... We just looked and the room was all mussed up. Who do you suppose did that, kids? Claire! Definitely Clarabelle, Howdy. I'm afraid we're right, but you know, it's, it's never right to blame anybody without proof. So, Howdy, do you know any way to prove that Clarabelle messed up Mr. Bluster's room? 
Well, gosh, Buffalo Bob, I don't know, but <laughs> I... Oh, well, here's Mr. Buster now. Hi, Mr. Buster. Uh, hello, howdy, my boy. Uh, Mr. Buster, do you know any way to prove who must up your room? Oh, yes, indeed I do, howdy. You do? Yes, Clarabelle must have been very excited while he was messing up my room because you know what he did? What? He forgot something. He forgot something? Yes, he left his salsa bottle in my room. Oh, gosh. Yes, and I have it safely hidden under the bed. Kids. Did you see Clarabelle? Yes! He looked in through the curtain right over there, and I'm going to get him before he gets that seltzer bottle back. Kids, I'll, I'll be right back. Yeah, I certainly hope that Buffalo Bob gets Clarabelle before he gets her away with that seltzer bottle. Oh, that clown. He gets away with too many things. No, you don't, Clarabelle. No, you don't. No, you don't. Oh, my. Stop. So, you thought you'd run away with that seltzer bottle, huh? And then we couldn't prove it was you who messed up Mr. Buster's new room. Didn't work, did it, Clarabelle? Huh? So now that we've proved that you did it, you are the one who's going into Mr. Buster's room and straighten everything out, just the way it was before. And I'll warn you now, Clarabelle, if you don't do it right, you'll have to keep on straightening that room until it's exactly right. So you might as well get started now. Go on, clean the room. Uh, Hurry up. Buffalo Bob, you make him do that. Uh. Gosh, I'm sorry, Good. Mr. Uh, thank you very much, and I'm, I'm going to go now and supervise Clarabelle's work personally. Boy, I think you better, I, Mr. Buster. I know I'd better. You know, sometimes I don't think Clarabelle will ever get straightened out. Boy, you're right, Audie. I'm afraid the same thing somehow or other. We should be able to figure out some way to teach Clarabelle that he only gets in trouble when he does bad things. But how can we possibly tell... Howdy, there's a talkoscope. That must be Orwell Willie and Dilly out in Arizona. Oh, gosh, Buffalo Bobby. Oh, you know, Orwell Willie and Dilly Dally started digging for oil yesterday, and oh, gosh, I, I wonder if they found any yet. Well, we'll find out right away. Howdy, I'll get our, our talkoscope all tuned in here. Well, let me see. There we're going. Now, well, let me see here. Get the screen turned on, and... Howdy, look, there's Dilly Dally. Hey, hiya. Hi, everybody. Hello, everybody. Oh, boy, Oil Will Willie is it's real busy. Yeah. yeah, he went down to Twin Falls to get some more supplies. But he told me to call down the walkie talkie scope. So, uh, oh, boy, I'm so excited. That's what we're doing. Yeah, and he told me to tell you that we've dug down 50 feet. Yeah, and we're digging, we're digging in the first place that the feather pointed to. Hmm. But the feather is still pointing back and forth and back and forth, and we're still a little confused. And Lyle Will Willie says that if we don't start well by tomorrow, who so I'm nervous, we'll start digging in the other place. Yeah, so, uh, well, we'll let you know. So long, so long. Hey, so long, little fella. Oh, dear, it's always good to talk to Dilly Dally. Well, howdy, I, I hope they'll strike oil pretty soon. Oh, boy, I do too, Buffalo Bobber. Or else I wish that old feather would, would just point one way. Yeah, you know, howdy, that is funny. Now, the fourth feather of the fifth pheasant always points to whatever you're looking for. But the last few days, it's, it's, it's been pointing back and forth and back and forth in two directions. So poor Dilly and... And oh, well, Willie, they don't know which way to dig. Well, now, look, if they don't find oil where they're digging right now, I hope they try some other place tomorrow. Because... Oh, Clarabel, you're back, huh? Did you get Mr. Buster's room all cleaned up? The way it should be cleaned up? Are you sure? Well, I think we better ask Mr. Buster first to see if it's okay. Howdy, would you call Mr. Buster, please? I think we'd better make sure that Clarabel cleaned up that room properly. Well, okay, oh, all right, oh, Mr. Buster. Oh, oh, well, Mr. Buster, I was just going to call you. Yes. Uh, I wanted to find out if Clarabelle cleaned up your room okay. Oh, uh, yes, and I came here to tell you that he did. You know, Clarabelle can be very well-behaved, you know, if he just wants to. My room looks as, well, uh, as nice as it ever did. Well, now, how do you like that? You see there, Clarabelle? Why can't you be nice like that all the time? You'd save us so many headaches if you'd only... Do things the right way in the first place. No, you... Oh. Oh, say, howdy, you know what I think you better do? You better tell all the boys and girls again how to send in for their wonderful Howdy Doody Mystery Periscope. 
Oh, yes, you're right, Papa Bob. Now, kids, don't forget, kids, to get your periscope. You just send 25 cents and the box top from any size halo carton with your name and address to Howdy Doody, Post Office Box 4, New York, New York. Now, don't forget, kids, the address again, you send 25 cents and a halo shampoo box top, and you send that to Howdy Doody, Post Office Box 4, New York, New York. Ah, that's right. But now, kids, don't forget to hurry. You hurry and you get your mommy to get you some halo shampoo, and then you can send in for your wonderful Howdy Doody Periscope now. Well, kids, how about an old-time movie? Would you like to see one? Yeah! Fine, and I'm not even going to ask Clarabelle to help me turn it on because you probably do something that isn't right. What's wrong with these curtains here? Right? Oh, oh, you were here. I, I knew you'd do some kind of a trick. I, I, I knew it, Clarabelle. Uh, well, kids, we got a good movie for you today. A movie about, I wonder if you remember what this little fella's name is. Well, I know you'll, you'll remember what his name is when you see him. The little fella in the derby, Mickey what? Yeah. McGuire, that's right. Well, now, Mickey McGuire and all his little buddies are out helping this lady. Now, this lady is called Aunt Gusty. That was her name, Aunt Gusty. And Aunt Gusty, she had a very nice piece of property. But she owed this man, this man with a derby, this is uh, Davy Davis's father. She owed Mr. Davis some money, some interest on the mortgage. You see, kids, when you can't pay all the money for your house, you borrow money from somebody, and then that somebody holds a mortgage on the house, and what you pay him is interest on that mortgage. Well, that's exactly what's happening. The man owns the mortgage on the house, and the lady, Aunt Gusty here, owns owes some money to this man, which is the interest on the mortgage, to Mr. Davis. Davy Davis's father. But it seems that Aunt Gusty doesn't have enough money to pay the interest, so all the kids around the neighborhood there, Mickey McGuire and all the boys and girls, they're going to try to get together, and they're going to try to get enough money so they can pay the mortgage so that Aunt Gusty won't have to move. So the kids are out, and they're trying to make money here. See how hard the kids are working. They're delivering things and all collecting their pennies and nickels so they can try to get enough money to pay Aunt Gusty's mortgage. Now watch, kids. There's Mr. Davis who wants to get up on top of the building. And he's having a little bit of difficulty there. He doesn't know that the kids, Mickey and the gang, are gonna pull the wagon away. They didn't know that he was up there. Well, now, kids, I gotta tell you something that, uh, that we didn't see yet in the story. This is something that happened a while ago. You see, Aunt Gusty has this land next to her home. Mickey has sort of uh, pulled a little trick on Mr. Davis because Mr. Davis was so very, very nasty to Aunt Gusty. Mickey took some gold dust and he sprinkled it on her ground. And what he's going to do is he's going to try to start a rumor that there's gold on Aunt Gusty's property. Now you watch what happens, kids. Actually, there isn't gold on the property, but he's going to pretend that there is. Now look, all the kids come back and they're so thrilled, they say, Aunt Gusty, I don't think you're gonna have to worry. We've been working so hard, we got so much money for you, we think that we have got enough for you to pay the interest on the mortgage. And there's a few buttons got in here by mistake. There's a check for a short haircut or something in there, I think. So anyway, Mickey says, come on, fellas, don't just stand around, we got a lot of work to do. He says, you know, he says, oh, work. He says, I'm working very hard. He says, look at all the money I've collected. So now look, Mickey McGuire is talking to this lady. He says, now look, lady, 
I don't want you to noise it around, but I understand that there's gold on Aunt Gussie's property. And she says, gold? No. Now Mickey says, don't noise it around. Now he told there, now that, that lady there that he told, that was Mrs. Keitch. And Mrs. Keitch told another fellow, and Mrs. Keitch told uh, Mrs. Schliffke, and Mrs. Schliffke told another lady, and all before they knew it, everybody in the town found out that there was gold on Aunt Gusty's property. Now, as we said before, kids, actually there wasn't any gold there, but Mickey just did this as part of a scheme. Now, you'll watch what happens a little bit later. So here's all the neighbors all out trying to find oil. And by George, look, Mr. Davis is brought over by Mickey McGuire. And Mickey says, you just put this Geiger counter on this property and see if there isn't gold. So the Geiger counter says, yes, sure there's gold. So now Mr. Davis, he wants this land more than ever. He was going to take away Aunt Gusty's property, but now that he knows there's gold on it, oh, he wants just as bad as he can possibly get it. Now, in the meantime, Aunt Gusty didn't have enough money to pay the interest on the mortgage, but the little doggy had some money that was saved by this little fella here, little Freddy. So little Freddy says, don't you worry, Aunt Gusty. We got enough to give Mr. Davis. He can't throw you off of your land. We got enough money for the mortgage. And sure enough, she has. So she gives it to Mr. Davis, and now Mr. Davis has to take it. So Mr. Davis says, I'll tell you what I'll do. He says, I'll tear up the mortgage. Ah, you're all paid off. He says, you know, he says, incidentally, he says, I think that I'd like this house of yours. He says, I'll tell you what I'll do. He says, I'll give you a check for $1,000 for this land. And Aunt Gusty says, oh, no. She says, no, no, you don't have to do that. She says, uh, this home is all I have, and I, uh, I, I, I want it. It's, it's home. So Mickey says, oh, I got an idea. He says, I'll get all these people over here. They think there's gold on the land. He says, they'll bid Mr. Davis up higher, and they'll make Mr. Davis give Aunt Gusty more than just $1,000 for the house and for the land. So one of the persons says, I offer $2,000. So Mr. Schlipke says, $2,500. And there's Minnie Moreland. She says, oh, I can pay more than that, $2,600. So this fellow over here says, well, I can pay more than that. He says, $2,700. The other says, $2,800. $2,900. And finally, the fellow says, $3,000. So Mr. Davis says, I'll bid 4500 So Mickey says to Aunt Gusty, he says, look, he says, you go take it, because he says, the land isn't worth that at all. But he says, because Mr. Davis was so nasty, and he tried to sneak your property right away from me, you take the $4,500. And sure enough, he writes out a check for $4,500, Aunt Gusty has got the money, and she promises to buy a nice summer home with a nice big lake for all the little boys to go fishing all year. Isn't that nice? Yeah. Uh, yes. Well, now look at Clarabelle. Clarabelle is being very helpful for a change about time, Clarabelle. Do you have something to tell the kids? What is it? Oh, yes, yeah, right. Kids, what do those bells mean? Yes, sir. One, two, three, sure. The big three musketeers. Oh, yes, sir, kids. It's the big three and one. Three musketeers. And it's the treat that's really tops in flavor. And the big three and one, three musketeers, gives you three times the candy eating fun. Oh, you're absolutely right, Howdy. Because, kids, you get three big pieces of delicious candy every time you get the big Three Musketeers bar. Now, you see, kids? Oh, yes, sir. That Three Musketeer bar has chocolate and cocoa both. And they're the exactly right combination of flavors. Isn't that good, Sonny? Ah, uh, you bet your life it's good. Yes, sir, and you know all you kids are going to love the Three Musketeers, just like Howdy and all the rest of us here at the Howdy Doody Circus. Oh, yes, sir, and kids, you'll be sure to get the big three-in-one Three Musketeers and enjoy more candy-eating fun. Hey, Howdy. Oh. Uh, Howdy. Uh, oh, hiya, Flop. Hey, Howdy. Hi hey, listen, I have something very important I've got to talk over with you. Oh, well, what, what is it, Flop? What do you want to talk about? Well, uh, you know that promise that I made? 
The one about uh, keeping a diet. Oh, oh, you promise not to eat any meatballs and spaghetti for a week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you promise not to take any other food without permission. Yeah, well, that's, uh, that's what I promised, all right, yeah. Yeah, and if you keep your promise, you get that feather hat that you want, right? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, actually, I don't want the hat anymore. Oh. These are carrot feathers that I've got. See them? Yeah. <laughs> Well, these carrot feathers that I got now will do me okay. I, I don't want feathers. Oh. I don't want hats. Yeah. You know what I want? What? I want food. Oh, well, Flub. So don't... I've come to tell you and Buffalo Bob that the deal is off. Tell you and Bob. Oh, but gosh, Flub, tomorrow's the very last day of your diet, and, and yeah. then you'll be all through. You bet I'll be through. I'll be finished. Oh, Flub, and besides, a bargain is a bargain, and when you make a promise, well, we are supposed to keep it. Hmm. Well, I'm hungry, and I... I can't eat a hat full of feathers. Oh, gosh. Buffalo Bob. I get yeah, feather poisoning. Yeah, now, look, Flubbadub. Yeah. Now, look. Don't you realize that if you just keep your promise for tomorrow... Yeah. ...then you can eat anything you want, and you'll have the feather hat, too. Hmm. And besides that, Flub, it'll make you feel much better to know that you kept your promise. Well, maybe, but... Yeah. Well, it'll make me feel better now to eat. Now, look, Flubbadub. What sensible talk is that? You've eaten three times already today, yeah. and it isn't even supper time. Yeah, I'm hungry. So you can't be hungry. Hmm. Now, look, I'll tell you something else. It's hard to believe that you are really the world's most wonderful animal if you can't even keep your word. Yeah, well, I am the world's most wonderful animal. Oh, oh, oh wait a minute. I, I see what you mean. What? You mean it isn't very wonderful to break a promise. Well, that's it. Well, so if I want to keep on being the world's most wonderful animal... Well, then you better keep your promise. Well, all right. I'll try it. I think you better, Flubber. I don't like it. Well, do it. But I'll try it. Do it. After all, I, I am the Flubber Dub. The, the Flubber Dub can do anything. Yeah, well, try it. I'll, I'll try, try it. it. I'll, I'll go along with it. How do you know there's one more thing I wish? I wish that we could not only do something with that Clarabel, but I wish we could straighten out that Clarabel clown. Oh, gosh, Buffalo Bob. The, you know, the princess had an idea about Clarabel. She's, as a matter of fact, She's talking the idea over with Mr. Bluster in his room right now. And that's my idea, Mr. Bluster. A splendid idea, Princess. After all, Clarabel did upset my beautiful new room, didn't he? That's right, Mr. Bluster. Yes. And he did something even worse than that to poor Chief Featherman. Why, really? he tried to take the Featherman's job as Chief of the Tinker Tunkers. What? And then when trouble came to Tinker Tunkers, Clarabel ran away. Well, something will have to be done. Absolutely yes, have to be done about Clarabel. Right. Uh, 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 that's for sure. And I, and I think that your plan is a very good one. Listen, why don't you go talk to Howdy Doody and Buffalo Bob about it right now, Princess? Huh? That's a good idea, Mr. Bluster. I'll go right now. Oh, a splendid idea, my dear. Splendid. Oh, boy, oh, boy. I certainly don't know what the idea is that the Princess had, but, boy, I, I hope it's a good idea. Gee, you know, I... I wonder what this big idea is, Buffalo Bob. Well, I don't know, Howdy. As a matter of fact, I, I don't care what the idea is if it only works. Now, Clarabel has been nice the last few minutes. But the minute we're not looking, there he goes again. I wouldn't be surprised, kids, if Clarabel would try to play another trick right now. Because you know that silly clown, Clarabel. He... What? He's what? Now, now there, see? There, you see, Howdy? Now, even when he's good, you can't tell a thing about him. Say, Howdy Doody. Oh, Howdy. Oh, oh, hiya, Princess. Hello, Howdy. Say, Mr. Bluster and I have been talking about Clarabelle. Yeah? And we have an idea to suggest to you and Buffalo Bob. Yeah? You see, I asked my friend Chief Thunderthud to come here also because he had some trouble with Clarabelle, too. Oh, boy, I'll say he did poor Chief Thunderthud. Oh, yes. Yeah. Trying to make an Indian chief out of Clarabel. Out of Clarabel. Boy. Oh. Chief Thunderthud. Chief Thunderthud agree with Princess Summerfall Winterspring that Clarabel needs special kind of punishment. Every time Thunderthud see Clarabel, Clarabel do something bad. When Thunderthud try to teach Clarabel good Indian custom, Clarabel make trouble for Thunderthud. When Featherman go away, Clarabel hide Featherman things. Clarabel make trouble for Featherman. When Tinker Tonka tribe attacked, Clarabel run away and disgrace whole Tinker Tonka tribe. 
Oh, gosh, Chief is right, Princess. He sure is. And then Clarabelle took stuff out of Pierre's kitchen, too. Just yesterday, he mussed up Mr. Buster's new room, and, oh. and look at all the things that he's done to Buffalo Bob. Oh, he's terrible. Huh? Boy, he's certainly done plenty of things, all right, but what do you think we ought to do, Princess? Well, just this, Howdy. Yep. And I think it's a very good idea that I have, too. This is it. I think we should make a great big doghouse. A doghouse? Yes, Howdy. And every time Clarabel misbehaves, we put him inside the doghouse. A doghouse? Wowee! Boy, I think that'd be good, Princess. Yes, and I think it would teach him a good lesson, too, Howdy. Say, kids, a doghouse. A doghouse for Clarabel. What do you think? A good idea? Yeah! Hey. You know, a doghouse should really fix that clown, Clarabelle, if anything fixes him. How about it, kids? You think so? Yeah! I certainly do, too. Look at yes, sir. What I... is this that you do now? It's Pierre. Oh, you worthless animal. You've eaten all the meatballs and spaghetti. What? The flubber have ate all the meatballs. Kids, did you hear that? Maybe the flubber dub should be put into that doghouse, too. Howdy! Howdy! Oh, flubber dub! Oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy! I've, I've just done what I've been wanting to do all week! What, Flub? And I'm glad I did it! What did you do? I ate meatballs and spaghetti! Oh. I ate them all! And I ate them without permission! Kids, listen to that. After that, flubber dub promised. Now, you kids wouldn't go back on a promise like that, would you? No! Well, I hope you would. I certainly wouldn't, but... Kids, you know what you could do? Ah, you could get yourself a Three Musketeers bar for a real, real treat. Because, you know, kids, the big Three Musketeer bar is candy that's made of fresh, pure milk chocolate and creamy, rich nougat. And that's why it tastes so good. Oh, and kids, you get three times as much candy-eating fun when you get the big three-in-one Three Musketeers. And Buffalo Bob, would you show the kids, please? Now, now, you just watch, kids. And kids, you'll see something, boy. Here is how it works. Ah, yes, sir. Now, kids, here is your big Three Musketeers bar. Oh, yes, sir. And here's why we call it the Three Musketeer bar, kids. Because it's one, two, three. Three Musketeers. And that's why we call it the Big Three Musketeers. So now, kids, whenever you go to your candy store, you'll be sure to look for and ask for the Big Three Musketeers. And it's such good candy that we sing about, too. Kids, let's sing about it now, shall we? Here we go. Oh, one, two, three. Kids, boy, at least one good thing we got settled today. We're going to try out that doghouse idea on Clarabelle and see how that works out. But I don't know about that silly flubber dub. Gosh, he broke his promise, and you know, I don't know about Oil Will Willie and Dilly Dally either. Gosh, digging way, way out there in Arizona. Boy, I... oh, but for Bob. But for Bob, listen, there they are now. You're right, Howdy. I wonder if they've hit oil. Gee, we got to try to tune them in here on the talkoscope. Boy, I'm glad they're keeping in touch with us all the time. Because I... Well, what's the matter with this, Howdy? I can't get a clear picture. What is this? I can't get a clear picture at all, Howdy. I can't see Dilly or Orwell, will it? Hey! Say, hello there, Buffalo Bob! Say, we found the well, all right, but it isn't an oil well. No, sir, it's a seltzer water well. NBC Television.